everyone. Jackson promised he'd do this video eventually, so here it is. Let's jump right in. <laughs> In our video, Map Power Part 1, we heard Matt claim that seashells are on the tops of mountains because the Noachian Flood distributed them there. Well, we know due to a number of independent lines of evidence that there was no global flood, and as such, the seashells weren't distributed by that event. But even if we ignored all other lines of evidence, how was a flood supposed to deposit these shells up on the tops of mountains anyway? Floods erode the soil from high elevation and deposits the sediment in valleys or in the sea, not the other way around. And these seashells, as well as other marine fossils, are found in the same position as they grow in real life, instead of being randomly scattered as they would be if they were laid down by a flood. So how did they actually get all the way up there? Well, to understand mountains and how they form, we have to first understand plate tectonics. You see, the Earth is divided up into three basic layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. We live on the crust, specifically continental crust. Meanwhile, the oceans sit atop the aptly named oceanic crust. The crust, as well as part of the upper mantle, is called the lithosphere, and this includes the tectonic plates. Just below that is the asthenosphere, which is also part of the upper mantle and the plate ride along this layer. We often imagine the stuff underneath the crust to be more or less like the liquid lava spewing out of a volcano. However, due to extreme pressure, the mantle consists mostly of highly viscous substance, which acts as a fluid over vast time spans. In 1862, Lord Kelvin estimated the age of the Earth to be roughly between 20 million and 400 million years old. He did this by calculating how long it would take for the Earth to cool down from a molten object to its current state, using his understanding of thermodynamics. However, Kelvin didn't take the heat that was produced by radioactive decay into account nor how convection within the mantle maintains a high temperature gradient inside the crust, both of which push the age much further back. Although you couldn't blame Kelvin for not knowing these things, not even Alfred Wegener, the one who spearheaded the theory of plate tectonics in the early 20th century, took convection into account. Wegener was subject to ridicule since most scientists at the time could not see how it was possible for the continents to plow their way over the oceanic crust. Now we know that the continents move by friction between the solid lithosphere above and the convection currents in the asthenosphere below, and that the convection currents inside the mantle is, in turn, driven by the heat from the Earth's core. The precise physics of these currents are still being studied by researchers, though, as described by the 2000 paper, Mantle Convection and Plate Tectonics, towards an integrated physical and chemical theory. Anyway, there's a limited amount of space on Earth, so plates are bound to bump into each other, one way they do this, the pertinent way, is at a convergent boundary. The collision of two plates has a number of results, including earthquakes, volcanoes, and orogeny, among other things. Of these, we're after orogeny, which is defined as a process in which a section of the Earth's crust is folded and deformed by lateral compression. Importantly, mountains are formed during this process. The plates collide, and the less dense plate is pushed up. Meanwhile, the denser plate is pushed under, called subduction, where it is to be recycled into the mantle. The subducted material may eventually reappear at a mid-ocean ridge where it cools to form oceanic crust. Prior to the continental crust being pushed up to form a mountain, it could have been under a body of water, such as a lake or a seaway. We mentioned in the video Tophonomy, the late Cretaceous Neobrar chalk formation in North America, where aquatic creatures were living and dying, leaving fossils. Should these fossils end up on part of a continental plate that collides with another, and should they be the lighter rock, they would have heaved skyward, eventually ending up on a tall mountain. So that sums it up. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.